Okay, now I am going to show you the uh, Modbus TCP uh, project. Um, so I have now my Arduino Uno, which is upon which I have the Ethernet shield mounted on. Because that's designed for the Arduino Uno or the Mega. I also have a Mega. Um, so I have, I have here a um, DC server motor. The ones that are used in hobby uh, projects like airplanes and all that. Or this uh, funky robots they have in those robotics competitions. That's what they use. Basically it's a control loop using potentiometers and a little DC motor with a gearbox. So this is like kind of faulty but it's the one I have at hand. Uh, it turns uh, the, sh the output shaft between 0 and uh, 180 degrees by adjusting the pulse width that you are transferring. So in the Arduino sketch you can uh, include the um, the servo motor library and just set uh, which pin you want to control with. In this case it's pin number 9 which is one of those that have pulse width modulating output. And um, just you just include the library and you will be able to communicate. And also you have to include the um, Modbus library. In, ca in this case I'm, I'm using a different um, library because this is I'm not using the simple Modbus uh, library. In this case I'm including something that's called Message Modbus which is used to uh, for TCP communication. So this includes in itself uh, the um, the SPI uh, to use the SPI port that the um, uh, the serial conversion takes place to the Ethernet shield, so that's included, and also the Ethernet H uh, include files is also added. So those two plus the message Modbus H and the servo in this case because I'm using a servo motor. So in the uh, variable and definition section, that's all common. You have to set the right uh, IP address. This is uh, this these three octets. You try to keep this the same. The gateway doesn't really matter a lot, and the subnet mask because I'm using only the last octet as usual. This is the most common IP address used like worldwide for ro for routers. Uh, I mean for routers and and stuff. So it's very known this IP address. So this is a project. So I'm using it as well. So here I have the Ethernet connection to my laptop. This is a makeshift uh, crossover Ethernet cable because I don't have a, a hub and I'm not sure if my Ethernet can cross over by itself. So I have this crossover since uh, the get go and um, connected to my Arduino. So as you notice, there is no USB connection. I'm connected using a cell phone to 5 volt uh, power supply because I don't want the USB port to supply voltage to the DC motor here. So all the electronics run using um, the, uh, sorry I forgot to put one wire which is the analog input. So I'm just going to do right now that. I'm going to take the potentiometer uh, cursor here and run it to the analog input zero here. Okay. Yeah, forget that one. My bad. Okay, um, because I'm, I'm, I'm reassembling this project to shoot the video, so I forgot that little potentiometer wire, so I, there you have it. So, these, the, the sketch uses the uh, serial port to transfer data. I'm not concerned about that a lot. I can show it to you later on, but right now I just want to show you that it's a standalone TCP 
Modbus slave, so there's no USB connection to it. So you guys can see that it's all, all everything is done by the uh, TCP connection. So there's a numbers catch. Um, I can. It, it uses the uh, serial port on the US through the USB pro, uh, port, virtual US, virtual serial port to, uh, which is also uh, used in debugging when you make a project in Arduino as catch and you want to debug it. You want the Arduino to talk you back and then you just open the monitor to see if it's doing what it's supposed to do. So you use the monitor, the serial monitor. So it's using it this time. So I left it in because I really want to make sure that the registers are getting the right values. But I'm um, using the analog read here on one register, register one. It's actually index zero, but it, it goes into 40,000 40, And that one is the value I'm going to write into the, um, uh, the servo motor, uh, pulse wheel modeling output. And pretty much that's it. And uh, also, let me see, let me see. I think I did include it. Yeah, this one here. That's about the uh, digital write. It writes if if um, register number two. This is register number three here. So uh, the way this library is uh, established is zero stands for one in four thousand. 40,001, this is 40,003, and this is 40,002. Okay, so that sketch is loaded into the Arduino compile and uploaded. So no need to keep that on the desktop. So I'm gonna shut it down. Yeah, that one too. And I will now pen Visual, Microsoft Visual C Sharp. And I have here my Modbus um, TCP test. Uh, project on C sharp. So, as usual, I've included the uh, little Sharpus reference DDL library, which is free. And all you have to do is execute this. It's actually much simpler. Um, you have to deal with it. So on this field here, I this is where you type in your your IP address for for the slave. So this computer's IP address is set to one. So um, uh, the Arduino is set to ten on the octet. So all I have to do is well, it's uh, just already connected to it. You can enable cyclic reading. And you can see now the LEDs start to flicker. Like maybe you don't see it because the camera is pretty crappy. But if I adjust it, right now it's set to 5 volts. So that's 20, 30, 20, 10, 23, uh, 10, 1023. Uh, but because it's a 10 bit uh, register on the ADC, it's on the Arduino. And it's a 10 bit. Analog to digital converter, so I'm gonna change that, crank it down. Let me see, it's hard because the potentiometer shaft is really small. Am I doing it right? I think I am. Wait, is there something wrong? Yeah, you know what? I forgot one last wire. There is no ground on this thing. It's already my bad. I forgot to add a ground to this. So there is the ground for the LED and the potentiometer. So there, so the potentiometer is taking 12, 5 volts, 0, 5 volts. So this is right here, is 0 volts. Okay. So as you can see, I can change that at will by adjusting the potentiometer. Your tiny potentiometer. So that's why it's hard because my fingers are very large and the shaft is so small. Uh, okay, so that's uh, almost zero volts and you can scale this, of course. So everything's run through the uh, uh, Modbus protocol. So this is where it gets complicated. So people understand, okay, protocol, okay. TCP is called transport control protocol. 
So you can imagine it like uh, those one of those big trailers uh, that transport cars on them, or those uh, ferry ships that transport cars. So it's a transport upon which you load uh, other protocols on top. So you have a transport protocol and you can have other protocols uh, placed upon them. So they just it just transports the protocols. And then other applications have to decode those protocols. So TCP IP is, a, is a, the transport and the protocols are the smaller vehicles or the smaller ships or the smaller airplanes on them and then once they get to the uh, to the harbor or the final destination they need an application to decode them so on TCP IP there are different ports and for the Modbus uh, it's port number 502 so this all is, is, is inter an international um, uh, office or uh, organization that controls which port different applications use so there's not like um, crashing because one application in your computer may be using the port that other application is, is attempting to use so there's an, uh, an international organization I think it's called ENA or something that defines or, or authorizes uh, the usage of ports so there's like 50, 50 65 thousand different ports on TCP IP and you can have IP ports and you can have um, uh, you can have I um, mean sorry TCP ports and you can have uh, UDP ports uh, you see that you saw that the grant package and but art but protocol on so you can have like you can be web, web browsing and at the same time transferring data through the same wire and that is because you're using if you're using a 10 uh, 1 megabit or 10 megabits or 100 megabits or even a 1 gigabit port on ethernet we'll call that double double increase your your performance but you can have a lot of applications talking through ethernet so it's a very it's commonly used nowadays so that's why I'm also exploring this so for instance, now I'm going to write a value so the LED can turn on. I'm just going to write a one here. And that will, I'm going to disable the, the cyclic reading. And I'm going to write a zero here. So that LED turn on. Okay. And I can write a zero here and that LED will turn off there and as I mentioned in, early in this video I have added a um, servo motor so I'm just gonna set the angle so this is from 0 to 180 so I can change that and 5 you can see the value is changing here by increments of 5 sorry about that or I can write I'm 120 but I can set that to say 0 And then it will move to zero. So um, there you have it. You also have the traditional error message box. So you can have like a remote control controller, like for your hydroponics garden or something. Using like you can have this like controlling a proportional valve, flow valve. And there is actually. Um, 3D um, um, prints that you can connect this to a hand valve and use this as a proportional valve. So, like to control flow. So you can create like a remote station where you can monitor uh, temperature, humidity, or light intensity, pH, uh, a lot of stuff. 
or levels, water levels, humidity. You can even do it wireless. You can have a this connected to a uh, hotspot. You can have there are also uh, Wi-Fi shields for your Arduino. So you could be using Modbus over your Ethernet uh, network and control stuff. Um, like in a form or that. So you don't longer have to go to like big expensive companies. I mean like here in the States there are Rockwell, Allen Bradley's PLCs are widely used and nowadays they are using control logics and compact logics uh, PLCs. They replace the older SLCs and micro logics. And I hate Rockwell because they're very um, Greedy. Now they're making their, their firmware not downgradable, so you have you have constantly keep buying their newer versions of RS or Logics 5000, it's called Visual, uh, it's called Studio uh, RS Logics 5000 or something. So also Alan, uh, also uh, Siemens is using their TIA portal. And I really hate that because they're like making it harder for people to use a product. You have to pay premiums and royalties and licenses and all that. It's hard, expensive, and for someone who doesn't have a huge budget but wants to automate something, you can always go to Arduino and this free open source community and make something like this and really save tons and tons of money by using something that is open source and freely available. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and um, thumbs up if you like the video and leave any comments down below. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.